welcome back to ASAP USMLE. Today we're going to be discussing bleeding disorders. They can be very pesky, so I came up with this short algorithm. Um, feel free to draw it along with me. So when you're dealing with bleeding disorders, I want you to first think of the platelets. Look at the lab values in the question. Are the platelets decreased or are they normal? If the platelets are decreased, the next question I want you to ask is, are there schistocytes? I hope I pronounced that right. If there are schistocytes, I want you to think about PT and PTT. If you look for these values, are they increased or are they normal? Low platelets, you're seeing schistocytes, and PT and PTT are all increased. What do you think this is? This is DIC. Now, if the platelets are decreased, you are seeing schistocytes, but PT and PTT are normal, this would be TTP. If platelets are decreased, schistocytes are not seen, the next question would be, evaluating the risto setting test now this test can either be abnormal or it could be normal if you have low platelets you have no schistocytes and risto setting test is abnormal this is bernard solier if platelets are low Schistocytes are not seen, and risto setting test is normal. This is ITP. Now, the way you'll know that the risto setting test was abnormal is that they will tell you that even though they added risto setting, the platelets were still unable to aggregate. If our platelets are normal, we're going to split this into an increased PTT value only or if there was increased PT as well as PTT. If you see an increase in PTT only, the next question you'll ask yourself is if there was a normal or abnormal risk setting test. Now, if the risk setting test was abnormal, and we have normal platelets, this would be a von Willebrand disease. And again, normal platelets, increased PTT with normal risk of setting tests, this would be hemophilia. Lastly, if you have normal platelets and an increase of PT and PTT, this is a vitamin K deficiency. Now, I'll briefly tell you a few descriptors that you'll see on the test that might allow you to pick these up if you don't remember this algorithm. So for DIC, you might see bleeding from venipuncture sites. And you might see some hypotension with or without shock. For TTP, you can think of the mnemonic FAT RN, like registered nurse. I know, pretty mean. So F is for fever, A is for anemia, T will be for thrombocytopenia, R will be renal, specifically acute kidney injury. And N will be neuro, which would be altered mental status. Now, Bernard Solier is usually asymptomatic, but it is an adhesion disorder affecting the platelets. So if you remember this, you'll remember that the risk of seating will be abnormal. For ITP, you'll often see that they describe a child um, after 
having a viral illness. Von Willebrand factor, this one's asked quite a lot. You'll be seeing just um, bleeding from mucocutaneous sites, uh, including nose, epistaxis, <laughs> nose. You would have heavy periods, a lot of bleeding, and you would see easy bruising. For hemophilia, you're going to have a deficiency of factors 8 or 9. For this reason, you'll see that PTT will be increased. A kind of giveaway is hemarthrosis, where you'll see um, bleeding into joints and it can be painful for them. And lastly, for vitamin K deficiency, so this is going to have an increase in synthesis of factors 2, 7, 9, 10, proteins C and S. Now, because it includes 7, we're going to have that increase in PT. This patient might have a history of taking warfarin. So that's it. I hope this wraps everything up for you and makes it easy to tell them all apart. So thank you for watching my video. This is ASAP USMLE and I'll see you on the next one.